Hey, this is George Mazzell. We're back to cover the last passage on this ACT. But before we get started, I wanted to give you just a little bit of info. Now that you've gone through this, you've seen how to handle this, you might want to lay your hands on this resource. This is the real ACT uh, prep guide. I use this in all of our classes that we teach, and we use it in our one-on-one. -on -one. This test book gives us three sample tests provided by the ACT, and they're not just they're not just practice tests, they're former tests. They actually have been given in the past, and so it's as close as you can get to the real thing. You can also talk to some other people around you. You may find that they have a test book from when they took the test a year or two ago. They may have ordered a booklet. That's a good thing to do as well. But we're going to go ahead and get started with passage 7 now. And passage 7 says, Glacier till, glaciers deposit till, which is a poorly sorted sediment. If glaciers repeatedly advance over an area, then melt back. Thick till deposits may form. Figure 1 shows the vertical core taken through layers of till, non-glacial sediments, and bedrock at a site in Canada. The resistivity, which is an electrical property of, of a material, and the CO2 measurements taken along the core are also shown. Resistivity is related to a sediment's particle size and its compaction and mineral composition. Table 1 shows the average percent sand, silt, and clay contents and the descriptions of the various till layers. So we look at this. When you've got this much information on one chart, it's really worth an extra minute to study this thing. We see that down from, we're going down. Again, zero's at the top. That's the surface of the ground. We're digging down in this core, 110 meters deep till we hit bedrock. We look at the different tills, the surface sediments, brown till, gray till, all of this is giving a name to the different layers. You look over to the side under resistivity. This resistivity, you see a sharp change when the type material changes because we've gone from one type of material to another, and that's how we can tell it with the resistivity change. Look at your CO2. It changes at exactly the same time resistivity does, letting us know it's a different type of material. Now we're going to take a look at Table 1. Table 1 shows us the depth in meters of the different till layers that's been deposited, and it shows us the composition. You'll see that it's got at the top up here the average percent by volume, and we're starting with the larger particle, which is sand, getting smaller, which is silt, to the smallest, which is clay. And we're, we can see the percents here. So now we're going to start off with the questions. Number 36, a sample of gray till was recovered from another core taken in a nearby area. The table below shows the results of an analysis of that sample. When you see this, you want to take a look and say, okay, where does this fit in the table data that's above? And we see that based on these data and the data provided in Table 1 and Figure 1, the sample of gray till corresponds most closely with which till from Figure 1. So we go up to Table 1, and we see that we've got a 31.5% sand. That matches up pretty close to gray C, which is a 31.7. You look at the silt, 33.7 matches up very close with the 33.6. We look at the 34.8 matches up closely with the 34.7. So we have gray C is the till. You look at answer H, gray C, gray till C. 37, according to figure one, the oldest, and it's in italics means don't miss this, the oldest glacial advance in this area deposited which of the following till layers, okay? Well, if you look, the oldest thing that would have been deposited would have been the sand and gravel, but that's not listed and it's not a till. So the next one would be the next one up, coming from the bottom up, would be the gray till D. And that's the answer, gray till D. It's just this simple. Number 38, according to figure one, which of the following statements best describes how the resistivity of the sand and gravel layer compares to the resistivity of the till layers? The resistivity measured in the sand and gravel layer is what? Okay, so let's look at our sand and gravel. It is much higher than any of the others. You just look at that, 0 to 150, it's closest to 150, so it is higher than the resistivities measured in any of the till layers. 39, the average resistivity of bedrock in the core is most similar to the average resistivity of which of the following layers. So we go to our bedrock and we see that it's around 50. We're going to go up and see which one, if there's another one, it matches up with the 50. Yes, right here, the olive, green, and gray teal is exactly 50, just like bedrock. So we say yes, it's the olive, green, and gray teal. Number 40, the sediments being deposited at the present time at the site where the core was taken have a much higher CO2 content than any of the other teals. So remember that, the sediments being deposited at the present time have a much higher CO2 content than any of the teals. Given this information and the information in figure one, the CO2 content of the sediments recently deposited at the site would be most likely to be in which of these following ranges? Okay, well we just look down through here on these tills and we see that we've got one till, gray till A, that's at about 35. They've just told us that it's higher than any of the others. So we don't know what it is, but we should know, J, that it's greater than the 35 milliliters per gram 
is the uh, CO2 content. That wraps up this test. Hopefully you've learned a lot from this and it's been a big help to you. Pass this link on to your friends. We would love to have all of you come and learn a little bit more about science and help you out on this ACT test. Thanks, we look forward to seeing you again.